For many of the kids in the Cincinnati Boy Choir, this is a life-changing experience for them. It's this thousand-year-old art that we're just trying to understand more about. The early traditions of the Boy Choir were such that when your voice changed, you were sidelined until your adult voice was really up and working again. It's important that we keep these boys singing all the way through. You know, if a boy stops singing for a couple years during that critical time, it's possible that he won't come back to it. So we approached Cincinnati Children's about this, and immediately Children's jumped on it and said, holy cow, this is just an amazing opportunity. Ah, you do that. Ah. There's very different schools of thinking of whether you should train through puberty or you shouldn't, and it really depends sort of on what school you come from and who your teacher's been as to how much and what you should do through this process. So in here, the data collection that we were doing was looking at something called a voice range profile. And a voice range profile looks at frequency, which is their pitch, and intensity, which is how loud they are. Got the right pitch. Yep. Here we go. So one of the things we're measuring is the, um, the pressure and the airflow um, that's generated when they talk. And we record that with specific instrumentation here in the booth. And then with the Star Spangled Banner, we're going to have raters, expert raters who are used to listening to voices so that we can correlate or um, see if what we find objectively is what people are hearing perceptually. What we want to do is to coordinate all of the different measures that we're gaining. We're also evaluating what the larynx looks like, the vocal folds. These two structures here are your vocal folds, so that's actually okay. where all the sound comes from. Hmm. Endoscopy is sort of one of the main ways that we identify pathology of the vocal folds and of the larynx. Looks like a little piece of spaghetti, um, and we put it in the nose, and we put it in the nose to look down through the nose around the palate to look on top of the voice box. And one of the big advantages of that exam is that it's really well tolerated. Mm -hmm and it can give you good pictures and it lets you look at people during sort of normal positioning. For us as, as practitioners, when we're taking care of performers, the hardest part is they never come in when they're healthy. They always come in when something's wrong. Um, and what's really nice for us, for a lot of these boys, is we get a great baseline. This is what you look like when you know, you're just kind of yourself and we you know now what this is what it is. And, allows us to work off that. And that can be a huge advantage when you're talking about when there's been a change. Now we have the technology, and that's something that's only been around recently. And so very few people have put that to use for a, a study this specific. And that's one of the reasons why it's, it's really groundbreaking. This is gonna have so much information. We're so excited about it. Oh,